Hello, hello, welcome to The Foreign Fork. Today we're making cacio e pepe, which is my favorite, seriously favorite, weeknight pasta recipe. It's a cheesy pepper pasta dish that comes together with only three ingredients, plus water if you count that too. I don't know if you do. Um, but it's gonna be really delicious and super simple, so keep watching and I'm gonna show you how to go through the steps. What's up guys? Welcome back to the Foreign Fork Kitchen. My name is Alexandria and this is the Foreign Fork where we're cooking one meal from every country in the world. And today we're going to be making a pressure cooker version of cacio e pepe, which is a cheesy pepper pasta dish. I love making it in the pressure cooker because it's so simple. If you've been around the Foreign Fork before, if you poked around my YouTube channel, if you've been on my website, you know that I have a cacio e pepe recipe that's made on the stove top and it has really crispy pancetta in it and it's so good. This recipe is a little bit different. We're tweaking it because it's gonna be made in the pressure cooker. To get started, we have two and a half cups of water. Next, I have eight ounces of dry spaghetti noodles. So the pressure cooker is what's gonna cook the spaghetti noodles, so you don't need to cook them beforehand. However, if you put try putting these into the pressure cooker, you can see that they don't fit. And it's really important when you're making pasta in the pressure cooker that the noodles are co completely covered by the liquid or else they're not gonna cook completely. I'm gonna break these in the pot so that you have half strands of pasta. So I always stick my hands like down low into the pot and break it so that the sides of the pot can catch anything. All right, so once the pasta and the water is in the pressure cooker, just use a little um, wooden spoon to just make sure that all of the pasta is completely covered in the water. Like I said before, anything that is sticking out of the liquid is not gonna cook correctly. It's gonna be like kind of hard, which we definitely don't want. I'm gonna put the lid on, I'm gonna close the pressure valve, and then I'm gonna cook it on high for eight minutes. When it's done cooking for eight minutes, I'm gonna do an instant release of the pressure so that the pasta isn't sitting in the pot any longer than the eight minutes needs it to. So I'm gonna open up the lid and I'm gonna make sure that I turn my pot off. On this pot specifically, and I know in some other pressure cookers, if you um, just open the pressure valve and you don't do anything else, it'll keep it on keep warm. The heat that's gonna come from the keep warm function may cause the cheese to clump. So right now we're gonna make sure that we turn the pot all the way off, even though it's still gonna be a little warm in there. You can see that there is some water still left in the pressure cooker. That's totally normal, it's fine, don't worry about it. You're gonna wanna leave that in there. But when the pasta is cooked in a pressure cooker, it continues to absorb the liquid a little bit after you've opened the lid and turned the pot off. So I have a block of Pecorino Romano cheese, and then I grated it on the tiniest setting possible on the cheese grater. So you can see it literally looks like snow, and that's pretty much what you want. If you buy the pre-grated stuff, sometimes um, it doesn't melt correctly because it has like anti-sticking agents on it and stuff. So little by little, I'm gonna take some handfuls of this and put it into the pasta. And then I'm gonna use my tongs and mix up the cheese so that it kind of melts right into the water. And now you can see that the water's turning a little bit cheesy, a little bit of like a milky consistency or color. So now I add my next handful. And we'll keep doing this until the cheese is gone or until the sauce has reached your desired consistency. If you get to a type of sauce that you think is a good consistency before you use all the cheese, by all means, you can stop there. And look at that, it's a nice, creamy, oh, delicious cheese sauce that comes covering this pasta, but we're not done. So if you'll remember, cacio is the cheese part of this cheesy pepper dish. Pepe stands for pepper. I have a black peppercorn grinder, and I'm gonna turn it to the thickest setting, which means that there's gonna be some pretty big pieces of peppercorn that come out of here. And I'm gonna grind it right into the pot. This is where a lot of the flavor of this dish comes from. So if you are making this, I myself am not a huge fan of pepper, but in this dish, it's necessary to put some good turns of pepper in there and make sure that you have all of that delicious peppery flavor. So I turned that peppercorn grinder, I got some pepper in there, but if you look, you can see a little bit of pepper, but you can't see enough yet, which means we need to add more. There we go, that looks more like it. If you really love pepper, you can add more. I think I'm gonna stop here. Um, this is a good amount for me, and that is all you have to do to make cacio e pepe. So simple, 
so delicious. So I'm gonna scoop it down into a plate and then I'm gonna try a bite. It is impossible for me to make this dish without remembering my time in Rome and feeling like I'm back in Italy, like if I close my eyes, I'm there. It's such an easy, authentic, absolutely incredible way to have a quick dinner on the table and I love it. If you wanna make this recipe at home, I'm gonna leave the link to the written instructions in the, in the description down below the video. And then don't forget to check out all of the other recipes that I have on here on my YouTube channel. There are delicious, awesome recipes from all around the world that I can't wait for you to try. Thank you so much for watching my videos and I will see you guys soon, bye.